Hi everyone, welcome to Moon Garden. My name is Abigail and today I'm inviting you to a tea party for my book club. We first need to make Rocky Road. I had leftover gummy candies from Valentine's Day and thought it would be nice to use them up. I've been into the 1940s lately and I'm trying to incorporate more of the ways not, want not thinking into my life. Okay, first we're going to set up our bashing station. Sorry, that was hard for me to say. First, lay down a sturdy cutting board, followed by a large tea towel folded in half. Place all of the biscuits or graham crackers between the folded tea towel and with a rolling pin, bash them until they're broken into sizes ranging from dust to lumps of about the size of a coin. You can have your own little therapy session here at this point. We have a little funny background story. So my husband, Matt, did the grocery shopping this week, and he is from Gibraltar, which is a British overseas territory. Sometimes we don't speak the same English, and so when it came to trying to find graham crackers, it was a struggle at first, but as you can see, he eventually found the right ones. Okay, next we're going to make a chocolate sauce and I already pre-melted my butter because I needed the American measurements. This is traditionally a British recipe, so I understood the recipe in that format, but not the American side. So you do not have to melt your butter in advance like I did. So in a large saucepan, add the butter, the chocolate, and then followed by the agave syrup. If you are British and you are having access to golden syrup, obviously you can use that, but we don't have that read readily available in the United States. You'll melt everything together on a gentle heat and then just occasionally stir it or prompt it to melt. I turned my back for just a couple seconds and mine started to boil. But again, I'm not heating on a regular stove, so I don't think you're gonna have that problem. Once the chocolate melts to about small flecks, then you can take it off the heat and let it stand and for about five minutes. After that, you'll just stir it ever so slightly at the end and make sure everything is smooth. To the saucepan, add the biscuits or the graham crackers, the marshmallows and the candies or dried fruit if you're using that. Stir until the chocolate entirely coats the mixture can take a while, but it does get everywhere. All of this will flatten into a tin that's lined with parchment paper. The size should be about 18 centimeters or seven inches. What I love about this recipe is that it uses ingredients that you have in your cupboard usually, or you can buy when they're available and they just keep them for a rainy day or a day you need to throw something together or just need an indulgent treat. You're going to want to refrigerate the mixture for at least two hours. On this particular day, even though it was winter, or is winter rather, it was very sunny, and I had done a lot in the kitchen as well. I had baked some cookies, so it needed actually a little longer. This is optional, but I always like to have a few of what's inside on top so that people know what they're eating. So I added a few more marshmallows and a few bits of the chopped up gummy candies to sprinkle on top. If you're using fruit, then that's where you would add a few bits of fruit too. This is a practice I have left over from my time working in a bakery, and I'll talk to you a little bit more about that later. As you can see here, the chocolate is not fully set, but that didn't stop me from beginning to cut it up. It's messier that way, but I just put it back in the fridge and actually the smaller pieces set up faster. Rocky Road is quite rich, so I ended up cutting it into bite-sized pieces when it came to serving it. For the book club this month, our group read a street cat named Bob and I ended up listening to some of it on audiobook and I just hand sewed a table runner. It was very, very therapeutic. Sewing by hand is really mindful and I had the time as I was listening to the book, so it was very relaxing. In theme with the book, my mom picked up some really cute paw print 
biscuits or cookies from the Cat Cafe, which supports local animals to find their forever homes. The two main characters in the book are the cat named Bob and the man who finds him called James. James is overcoming an addiction to drugs and finds the greatest support from Bob. He finds that caring for Bob helps him to care for himself. When I lived in London, England, I had the great honor to partner with two other women to found Luminary Bakery. It's a baking entity that trains women who are from vulnerable backgrounds how to bake so that they have transferable skills. There are many people like James or the women who come to the bakery to find support and they overcome difficulties in life that no one should have to face alone. To our tea party was added a recipe from the Luminary Bakery cookbook, Rising Hope. I made Mims vegan chocolate and sea salt cookies. They are not originally gluten-free, but they translate really well when using gluten-free flour. I will actually link the recipe from an article The Guardian wrote in the information box below. Thanks for allowing me to share this special day with you. And as always, thank you so much for stopping by.